William Wallace must be one of the most famous names in Scottish history. But do you know who his best friend was? The Robin to his Batman. You've probably passed through the train station named after him a hundred times without ever realising it was a tribute to a true Scottish hero. So let's change that today. I'm Bruce Fumi. I lived in Falkirk for two years. In fact, it was where I bought my first house. I got on and off trains here at Falkirk Grahamston more times than I care to remember. But at the time, I never realised that this station or the Grahamston area behind me where it's Main Street, Graham's Road, were all named in honour of one of Scotland's greatest yet oft forgotten heroes. If you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right hand side of the screen. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. The problem with forgotten heroes is that nobody can remember them, so details are hard to find. Today's hero might be elusive, but I think it's only right that I try to tell the story of Sir John de Graham as best I can, with thanks to David Reed of the Sir John de Graham Society. What we do know is that John de Graham of Dundaff grew up here at Dundaff Castle in the Cairn Valley near Falkirk. Presumably, it was around this area that he met William Wallace when they were young. Wallace had grown up with his priestly uncle in nearby Dunnypace. You can just imagine them as boys running around, riding their bikes, playing chicky melly, letting off stink bombs in the post office. Actually, I think that was me. Anyway, in 1296, Edward Longshanks had invaded Scotland and imposed English garrisons. Wallace hadn't long started his guerrilla campaign against them and late in the year he found himself having to swim an icy river forth over in that direction to avoid capture and he arrived here at Dundaff Castle to seek refuge with his old boyhood pal. That was the start of a close relationship as comrades in arms. A few days later Wallace headed off to Lanark for Christmas. But they were together again early in 1297 after the Christmas holidays. I don't know what it is about Wallace and being chased across the fort by Englishmen, but de Graham came to his rescue again, this time arriving at Queen's Ferry with 30 men to defeat English pursuers. In May came an event that's often cited as a key turning point in Wallace's life, although in truth, he was probably already well down an inevitable road by then. The story goes that as they were leaving church in Lanark one Sunday, William Hesselrig, Edward Longshank's sheriff, insulted Wallace, and of course, John de Graham was there. A fight ensued between Wallace's band and the bigger English force. Wallace and de Graham were helped by the fact that it took place in a narrow street, and then they managed to escape through the house of a woman called Marion, who some people have reported as Wallace's wife. Hesselrig had her killed and burned down her house. So naturally, in revenge, Wallace came back and killed the sheriff. Now again, there's debate about the detail. Did Wallace really kill the sheriff? Some claim it was Bob Marley. Others say it was Eric Clapton. What we do know is that whilst it was going on, de Graham attacked and killed the garrison commander and his men. So, contrary to popular belief, we don't know who killed the sheriff, but we do know who killed the deputy. He was Scottish, and probably had dreadlocks, and I've said too much. William Wallace and John de Graham with 300 men went on to attack and defeat a thousand English troops at the Battle of the Bray in Glasgow. And then, in 1297, when Wallace and Andrew de Murray brought their forces together to defeat the English at the famous Battle of Stirling Bridge, John de Graham was at his side. That winter, when Wallace invaded England, de Graham was there. In 1298, Edward Longshanks of England had had enough. He invaded Scotland with a huge army. The problem would be how to feed that army and where were the Scots? You see, the Scots avoided a pitch battle and burned everything behind them. This scorched earth policy left nothing for the English army to forage. And with hungry English, Irish and Welsh troops fighting amongst themselves, 
they were about to head back south empty-handed as the Scots observed them from a close distance. Then, a fateful event. Now, I've heard some say that they were betrayed. I've heard others say that Wallace failed to heed the Graham's advice and took battle. I've heard other stories still. The result, we know for certain. A pitched battle here in Falkirk. And this monument in Callender Park commemorates the event. It's said that a young lad preparing John de Graham for battle prepared his armour incorrectly and left a gap at the waist and what was a disastrous battle for Wallace and for Scotland was a final battle for John de Graham who died of course fighting side by side with Wallace. Now they say that the Fortingall yew tree in Persia is the oldest in the world and it was around at the time of Christ. This one here in Dollar Park in Falkirk is reputed to be where John de Graham was laid in his death and where Wallace returned after the battle. The epic poem, The Wallace by Blind Harry, tells how under this tree, Wallace wept and grieved for his comrade in arms, his dearest brother and his friend. Wallace himself carried his friend to Falkirk for burial. And when I say Falkirk, I mean here. There's been a church here since the 7th century. It's what gives the town its name, Faw Kirk, the speckled church, Eccles Freck in Gaelic. And here in these grounds, we find the tomb of one of the great Scottish heroes, Sir John de Graham. Here lies Sir John de Graham, both white and wise, in of the chiefs who rescued Scotland thrice. In better night not to the world was lent, nor was good Graham of truth and hardiment. Much of what we know about Wallace and de Graham comes from a poem written 200 years later by a guy called Blind Harry. So obviously... Don't see it, don't see it, don't see it. He wasn't an eyewitness. There'll be complaints. Of course, Wallace faced his own brutal death seven years later. And he has his monument just outside Stirling commemorating the glorious victory at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. But let's not forget that there were other Scottish heroes at Stirling Bridge. One of them was Sir John de Graham. Another was Andrew de Murray. And if you want to hear the story of that true patriot of Scotland, then you can watch my video about him here. Hamendoch is going to be la my life. Cheerio and Rasta.